I'm all about dreaming big and having these big visions, but sometimes you kind of have to start small and sometimes you don't have those visions to get started. But like as you go, your vision grows and grows and grows because you can see the potential as you start to take action. Hi everyone, I'm your host, Karen Bond, founder and creative director of House of Bond, the interior design studio in Vancouver. Over the past 15 years of running my firm, I've learned a thing or two of what makes a creative business successful. Everything from operations to sales to marketing. I mentioned that I have a Netflix show, right? Well, I've always said that in order to grow professionally, you have to grow personally. Leveling up requires pushing past your comfort zone, taking risks, and sometimes making mistakes. This podcast covers all of the above. I talk to inspiring entrepreneurs and prolific creatives about their own business journeys. These stories include acts of courage, moments of self-discovery, failures, victories, and all the learning in between. My goal with this podcast is to build community and serve you by providing advice, insight, and aha moments that you can apply to your own business and life. Take what speaks to you and leave the rest, but join me on this journey and welcome to my show. Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. I am so excited about today's guest because I have Miss Danielle Weeb in the hot seat today. If you're from Vancouver and in the business community, I am sure that you know who Danielle Weeb is because she is the founder of the Business Babes Collective, an amazing community that you've built for a number of years now. And you also have a podcast of your mm -hmm. own yes. called the Business Babes Collective. Yes. So I'm really excited to dive in today and to talk about your journey as an entrepreneur, building your business, where you're at today, maybe a little bit of family life. Yeah. Uh, let's get into it. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me here. And I'm so excited to be here. And I'm so excited that you're starting a podcast. You're the perfect person to do it. So Aww. I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm excited to have you as a guest. And I, I, we were saying earlier, when I mentioned that I wanted to start a podcast to you, I love that your response was, oh my God, do it. And it's such a amazing, supportive platform and yes. community. And yes. so far, I've definitely found that to be true. Like it's really uplifting to have conversations with other business owners and entrepreneurs. Yes, absolutely. And I find too, like just the collaboration of business owners supporting one another in this space is, yeah, just really, really encouraging. Like I, I have always had that type of mindset and I know you do as well, Karen, and because we've collaborated several times, but not everyone yeah. has that mindset. But I find in the podcast space, it's just a really collaborative and supportive community. So yeah, and great. this morning uh, we did another filming, and it was my first virtual podcast, okay. which Love is that. different. I feel like we're swapping seats right yes, now because yes, yes. you normally don't do in person, no, or video. <laughs> no, no, this is like so different for me, but and I love it. I haven't up until this morning. I haven't done a virtual podcast where the guest was not yeah. local. Like usually I love doing this. Like I love being able to sit down yeah. and kind of feel your energy and look you in the eyes. Yes. And um, I, I just really like that. So it was definitely a different experience for me doing it virtually. Yeah. Yeah. There's different. I think too, like you have to bring the energy so much more when you're virtual because of that kind of disconnect a little bit. So you almost have to like embellish it a bit so people can feel the energy because or else it gets lost in, yeah. because you can't see the person. So you can't see their mannerisms. You can't see the smile on their face, things like that. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. Sure. You really have yeah. to like bring it up. Yeah, I find. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your story because yeah. I don't know that I yeah. have even heard it as much collaborating as we've done we've you've been, appeared on my YouTube channel before. I've spoken at some of your events. We've done a lot of collaborating, but I don't think I've ever heard your sort of origin story and your journey. Like what got you into starting your own business and starting or founding the Business Babes Collective? Yeah. So um, we have been doing uh, events actually like we started out with doing events kind of like what you said in Vancouver and that started 
almost eight years ago now. So um, before that, I had really kind of dipped my toes into entrepreneurship. I was in kind of the social media marketing world. I was taking on some clients. I also worked for my mom, who is a business owner. And so I always knew that entrepreneurship was something that I wanted to pursue, but I didn't know exactly where I fit or what I wanted to do with that. And so I tried a lot of different things. And what I realized was, okay, I love people. Like I love connecting with other people. Um, and I love community and I love like marketing and branding and all those things. And so I wasn't really sure how that was all going to come together, but I thought, okay, I feel that I need a community for myself of other entrepreneurs who are like-minded. And a lot of times I would, you know, network um, before I had started this community, I would network and I always kind of felt like I was a fish out of water in those events. Like I was always usually one of the youngest at those events, one of the only women. And so I felt like I didn't belong there. Like it felt like it was this club that I couldn't be a part of. Yeah. And so for me, I was like, I, I think there's other people like me who maybe also feel this way or they feel intimidated because maybe they don't have all the answers and maybe they want to learn from other people, but they feel like they're not really allowed in those spaces. And so for me, I was like, hey, how can I create this community? How can I start to host these little events? And it really started super small. Like it was, I hosted a pop up event. I think our first event had like 10 people maybe there. Yeah. And, um, well, and then, can I need just need to jump yeah. in already with this story because, <laughs> uh, we have a very similar story in th that I, when I talk about going to social media and like building my YouTube channel, yeah. it was very similar. I was a young entrepreneur, yeah. new, but getting my interior design business off the ground. And I would go to events, yeah. networking events, and I would talk to other business owners. And I was always really surprised that everyone kind of had the answer of like, everything is great. Everything is great. My business is wonderful. We're growing more projects, more people, you know, right. like it was always kind of the same, like, it's great. It's great. It's great. So busy, so busy. <laughs> and I always felt like, oh my God, am I the only one that feels like building a business is really effing hard? hard yeah. And nobody was saying that. And so yeah, out of that and feeling similar to you, yeah. a fish out of water, yeah. um, I decided, okay, I'm going to go to YouTube and yeah. start talking about this on YouTube because there's got to be other people who feel the yes. same way that I do. And I started my YouTube channel with my little flip camera. So good. I love that. I um, remember that flip camera because you brought it to one of our events when you I probably, spoke. I probably did. Yes, oh, my God. Yes. And it had like <laughs> um, production is going to laugh about this. It had like an automatic zoom, but it was the type where you could hear it. The audio right. would be like click, 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 <laughs> as it was zooming on me. Um, but yeah, so you start you start small and yeah. Um, yeah. Th that's how it begins. So I'm just I relating to your story I of like so pop up event. 10 people. Yeah, exactly. And I think like at that point, I also had no idea that this was actually going to be a business. I, I just thought, okay, this is something that I want to do because I feel like I need it and maybe other people need it too. So it was, it was like a hobby. Like it was mm -hmm. something that I was doing for fun. And I was like, okay, if I can cover my costs of what it costs to put on these events, awesome, great. So that's how it started. And then- Isn't that funny too, how in the yeah. beginning you're like, success is I break even. Break even, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it wasn't- I am I not didn't... out of pocket for this. Yeah. That is success, yeah. And I think often people think that you have to have, I'm all about dreaming big and having these big visions, but sometimes you kind of have to start small. And sometimes you don't have those visions to get started, but like as you go, your vision grows and grows and grows because you can see the potential mm -hmm. as you start to take action. And so that was a big lesson for me. So uh, after the first event, there was a couple people who came up to me and was like, okay, great. Like, when's the next one? I was like, I don't know, but I'll get back to you on that. And so we, yeah, we started a meetup group and. And uh, were those first 10 people, 
were they like was, was everybody strangers or was there like did you have like your mom and two people were your siblings or like what yeah such a great question okay so the funny thing is is that when i first started uh, it was actually people that i had met at other networking events that i had like kept in contact with okay so it was ran kind of random people that i sort of knew but i actually didn't tell anyone in my warm network that i was doing this because I was kind of like embarrassed about it. I was like, I don't know where this is going. I don't know if this is even a thing. So I'm just going to kind of do this. And I didn't tell anyone that I was doing it. Um, and I just invited, you know, these people that I knew. There and was so pro probably a part of you, too, that almost felt like you don't want to like inside, you don't want to give it away. You don't want people to like poo poo on this yeah. thing that you could be really exciting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that was definitely a fear that that held me back. Um, and actually, like as I grew the community and I'll kind of fast forward because it's a really long story, but basically we it kind of just snowballed from there. So we hosted our first event. We started a meetup group. We um, hosted our second and then we just started hosting monthly events and then I realized okay I want to bring in because yes like the connection and the collaboration aspect of it is great and amazing but I want to bring in other experts um, and that's when we started doing panels so I was like how can we connect in and and allow these women that are coming that are wanting to learn to hear from people that are, you know, even five steps ahead of them or 10 steps ahead of them. Right. And so that's where it started. And so bring in all these other people. And the cool thing about that is that a lot of these other women that I was connecting with were were influential. And so they also helped build the community as well. And so I always say, like, I didn't have any connections to get started. It was really through the connections that I made and the collaborations that we did that allowed us to grow this huge thriving community. It, I would have never been able to do it on my own if I were to try to, you know, build my social media mm -hmm. on my own. And a lot of people were saying like, oh, well, how are you getting so much traction? Like even on social media, like how are you doing that? It's like because we're bringing in all these other people who are also have their own networks. And so it's like a compound effect, right? All of these, all of these other women who have their own communities are now a part of this event. They're all promoting it to their own networks. And it just kind of grew exponentially from there. And so it kind yeah, of, that what was comes to mind for me when you're saying that is what what is that saying when if you want to go fast, do it alone. If you want to go far, do it with others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or something like that. Yeah. Um, and you're touching on the power of community and also something that you said in there is this idea of letting go and allowing others to help mm -hmm. build even that can you talk a little bit more about that yeah. and the reason I'm so curious about it just to do a, like a personal share is for me at House of Bond, in my interior design studio, sometimes it's really hard to get outside of these four walls. Mm -hmm. We're so busy with our head down. We have multiple projects that we're doing. And even though community is something that's so important to me, it's like, ah, oh, there just is not enough hours in the yeah. day. Or unless I'm doing something like this yeah. podcast or event, or then it is almost really hard to tap into community. Yes, yes. And I totally understand that. And that's like one of the things I think is you have to kind of look at community and collaborations and these opportunities as a part of your marketing strategy mm -hmm. and a part of your growth strategy. Because I think often people are like, oh yeah, community, that's kind of a great thing to have, like, you know, mm -hmm. if you have time or, you know, oh, I would love to collaborate and work with this other aligned business, but, you know, we don't really have the capacity for that. So, you know, we're going to do this instead. And I see so many people, you know, investing so much time and energy and money into their marketing, which is great. I love marketing. Like, I think it's fabulous. And they're spending, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars a month on advertising and mm -hmm. all these things. But it's like, what if you took a section of that and actually invested it into collaborations and building community? And that is actually a part of your strategy instead of just this totally. like extra thing that's like, oh, that would be nice to do. But, you know, we don't have time for that. Totally. So I think that is one of the things that I try to encourage people 
on is this is something that usually gets put on the back burner, but it's like one of the most important things. And why, do. why do you say that? Why do you say it's one of the most important things? Because I think r connecting with other people that have aligned communities or aligned businesses, you never know where those connections and those relationships can lead. So obviously for a lot of businesses, referrals is huge, like it's a huge part of their business. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sister. Yeah. Right. And especially <laughs> if you're in the service industry or I mean, even if you're in products, like think about the connections that you make. I know like I've heard story after story after story about, you know, business owners who are like, oh, I would love to get featured in this, you know, magazine, or I would love to be, have my product in this store. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a connection and you build a relationship with someone who's already done that, you can connect with them and ask them and potentially get the exact contact mm -hmm. of who it is that you need to reach out to, to get that opportunity. So I think it's just, that's why I think it's so important is because if you just try to do everything yourself and, and also it's this mindset of, abundance as well instead of scarcity of well I don't want to connect with people that I consider to be my competition mm -hmm. and when you have that mindset you're really just limiting yourself so much to so many opportunities um, and so I think it's really important to have a collaborative mindset so that you're opening yourself up to more and I think most successful business owners understand that like mm -hmm. And is it, it comes somewhat natural to them or they've kind of worked on that. Like, Karen, you are in just your nature is collaborative. And it's mm -hmm. like, I want to bring other people, you know, into my community and I want to be a part of events. Like you're a part of all these different events and, and you're supporting your community and that comes naturally to you. But it doesn't come naturally, I think, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a skill that you have to work on. And if totally. you're introverted... It, it can be a challenge, but it's something to just work on and to continue to yeah reach out and build I those completely agree. And I love that you're touching on that, that it's just like anything else. It's a skill that you mm -hmm. can work on. It's a muscle that you can build. It might not feel totally comfortable or natural to you in the beginning, yeah. but it's something that you can really like learn and develop and cultivate and, and get better and better at. Um, and as, as you were talking about that, I was also thinking of the idea of building community is really like it's it's not casting your net necessarily wide but going deep yeah and sometimes i think the or at least for us going deep in our community even if it's with our just with our clients you're building mm -hmm. a kind of loyalty um mm -hmm. that you may not be building if you're casting your net wide and yeah. i think that's a little bit about what you're talking about is yeah. like you know investing a lot of resources into marketing yeah. and casting your net wide is great yeah. because ultimately you're trying to gain that visibility. Yeah. Uh, so you want to be, you want to have as many eyeballs on you as you can yeah. when you're in business, but at the same time, really cultivating depth in those relationships is part of what will make you successful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, like the biggest thing that I've learned because, you know, an, a big part of my journey and our story is, you know, obviously we were totally events based. We actually ended up launching in five other cities across North America. So we had different chapters and we, we grew really quickly and that was exciting. Um, it was also very overwhelming. And I mean, that's a whole other story, just experience burnout and all those fun things. But then 2020 happened. And so 80% of our revenue at that time was events. And so that was like a really scary time. And I know a lot of people can relate to that like terrifying moment of realizing, oh my goodness, like we have to totally pivot this. Like yeah. we have to do something yeah. different. And so- I'm glad that you're touching yeah. on this. Was your business, when you say that, like 80% yeah. of your revenue comes from events, yeah. in-person events. In-person events. People can buy tickets and show up yeah. and we you can do this. And boom, the pandemic hits and like yeah. you can't even go get a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, can you talk about that a little yeah. bit? And was it kind of like this overnight thing where you were going, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I think 
one thing that, of course, at the time we had no idea how long this was going to last. We thought it was such a short term thing. And so we just had to really think and act really quickly. Um, but the amazing thing. Did you have events that had to be canceled? Yes. Yes. We did. Okay. Yeah. Um, and of course, it uh, for every one of our chapters and the way that it was set up is that we were we part of our revenue is also for our chapters and the events mm -hmm. that were, they were hosting as well. And so um, the biggest thing though that actually helped us and carried us through was because we had built those relationships and those connections. Um, so we ended up pivoting and hosting these online virtual events. And so that was like our first thing. We, we transition and I think you might have been part of one of the virtual events that we did. I was. Yes. You definitely yes, were. Yeah, and yeah. so that was so cool because it was so amazing to be able to reach out to people like yourself and people that we had had a part of past events and we had already built that trust and that relationship with and said, hey, we're doing this thing and it's going to be virtual. This is the vision. This is what we're doing. And then it was like this Okay. And everyone rallied around and wanted to support this, the community. Exactly. This is yeah. where um, I want to talk about this because I think when you are investing in community, you are building a support system. Yeah, exactly. And that is what is so crucial and critical because a client or a customer might, that just might be transactional, right? Yeah. You are providing a product or a service mm -hmm. and they're buying, but that relationship might not necessarily be there unless you're actively working on it. Right. And in, if you invest in your community, there, there, there's a return on that investment. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I think that you, you can call on support when you need it. And every business <laughs> will yeah. go through times when yeah. you need support and every business owner will go yeah. through times when you need support. And so I think that is a big value. Yeah. Uh, about community for sure. And something that I just thought of when you were saying that is you're kind of building your safety net, right? And so when you think about like, you don't wanna call on people in like a state of desperation when you've never really had a conversation with that person or you know them very surface, surface level, which goes back to your point of building relationships and building them deep and, you know, um, my suggestion for business owners is I would rather them think of 10 people or 10 businesses that they would love to connect with, love to collaborate mm -hmm. with and connect or pitch that those 10, but do it in a way that is really personalized and really specific instead of, you know, sending the same pitch email to like a hundred people at yeah. once, because that, it's no one's going to respond to that because it's just they they know that you've you know sent it out to a bunch of people and, and so, it's going to feel salesy and yeah and, exactly. and don't get me wrong I love I love sales and sales is a yes. topic I could talk about all day long <laughs> but there's the side of sales that's like the cheesy carsman yeah. sales part yes. that you don't want and so that's if you send the mass email it's kind of like that exactly exactly and so um and so if you build those relationships and then you continue to foster those relationships like, I think that our relationship is a perfect example of that, where we started collaborating like about six years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And we've done several things since then. And we've supported each other's communities through so many different aspects of like changes in our business. And I think that that is so cool. And yeah, someone I actually on my team was they were like, how do you know, how do you guys know each other? And I was like, <laughs> how do we know each other? Is it just through events? Yeah, I think I, I'm trying to remember if we met each other at a separate event and then connected. And then I know you spoke at an event that we hosted. Yes, that was a total at the fluke. Roundhouse. Yes. Yes. Was that six years ago? I think that was about around there. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. 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 So that was like one, like one thing that we did together. And you know, that could have been just like, OK, we did that one thing together. Cool. See you later kind mm -hmm. of thing. But like, I love the fact that we've kept in touch and we've continued mm -hmm. to build our relationship over time because more opportunities come 
from that. And I just think that's so cool. And I have like story after story of, you know, um, business owners and, and, and women that I connected with you know, eight years ago or six years ago or four years ago that I'm still connected with now. Mm -hmm. And we've supported each other and connected and collaborated in that way. And it like, I know for sure that I would not be anywhere near where I am now in my business if I did not have those connections and Mm -hmm. I didn't foster those relationships. And so, yeah, I encourage every entrepreneur to think about like, what are those relationships Mm -hmm that maybe you already have started in your business. And could you, you know, take that a step further? Could mm-hmm. you like be like, hey, we should go for coffee and just like talk about like how we can support each other. Mm-hmm. Like how can we uh, support each other better? Like how can we connect and maybe connect uh, each other with other entrepreneurs or other opportunities that might be helpful for one another and, mm-hmm. and those type of things. And I think that's where um, the magic happens. So mm-hmm. yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. So let's go back to it's 2020. Yes. <laughs> and you're having this oh shit moment. Yes. <laughs> and you're pivoting now to online. Yeah. So that pivot had to happen really quickly. Yes. Because we didn't know how long. I mean, we were in lockdown yeah, for know. forever, it seemed yeah. like. Um, so maybe talk about that transition a little bit and what, like, where were you at personally? Yeah. What was going on? Yeah. So I think the first probably about three months, I just was sort of <laughs> treading water at that point, trying to figure out what can we do. Um, the, the challenging part that I was facing was, okay, we are a community that support other business owners. And so we need to show up for those people and we need to help and support. But I'm like, I also can't support and show up if I also, you know, if if we're at like net zero for, you know, our revenue and everything. So it was like, how can I support our community in the best way and, and provide them with services or whatever or or support in a way that that helps them but that also is able to replace the revenue that we had lost and so that was sort of where I was at and so um that was a transition we honestly tried a lot of things um and some things worked some things didn't so we hosted these uh, virtual events and the first few months they were great and then I think people got a kind of sick of being on Zoom because they were on it 24-7. And so um, you're doing your meetings on Zoom. You're doing your uh, we were just to interject here. Yeah. So I talk about this all the time. We have a tradition at House of Bond Champagne Friday, and that's the last Friday of every month where we get together and celebrate our successes, have we and we toast and we everybody gets to go around and talk about their success for the month. And this is a long standing tradition that we've had. And during the pandemic, we were doing Champagne Friday over Zoom. So it's like everything. I feel like you're socializing over Zoom. You're doing work over Zoom. You're doing all your entertainment is on Zoom. So I can understand people getting a little like Zoom burnout. Yeah. And so we had to just really figure out, okay, well, what do people need? What kind of resources do they need? And obviously at the time, it everything had to be virtual. So how were we going to do this? And so we ended up actually hosting this, this conference in the fall of 2020. And it was actually a huge success. We actually didn't do it on Zoom. We did it on this other platform. And it was, it was really great. It was very interactive um, and everyone loved it. But after that event, we had actually also launched a membership on the backside of that event. And after that event, and we had all the chapter leaders involved in that as well, I hit a really bad burnout. Like I realized, okay, this is not sustainable how we're doing things. I was kind of coming up with ideas on the fly of like, what's next? What are we doing? How can we? And it was just, I needed to, I needed space and time to just, think and not, I'm a very action, like I take action, which is a good thing, obviously in entrepreneurship, but I have a really hard time pausing and reflecting and actually thinking, okay, well, what do I want long-term? Like, what do I want my life to look like? What do I want my business to look like? And so that was in September of 2020. And then, so I, I took that month and I was like, okay, I need to figure out 
what the heck I'm doing here. And <laughs> and and were was that hitting that moment of burnout? Yes. Was that because do you think it was triggered by this need to have to pivot so soon? Because yeah. The reason I asked that question is because there's no question that when you have your own business, it mm -hmm. is a hustle and it is a grind mm -hmm. and you're you're hustling and grinding mm -hmm. like every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you go through seasons where you're doing that more and doing that less, yeah. but you're but you kind of always are. And so yeah. I think with 2020 hitting and there being like a forced mm -hmm. like pivot. You have yeah. to look at your business and now go, oh my gosh, I have to come up with a new strategy again and a yeah. new X, Y, Z um, that can be really tiring. And, Absolutely. It, and I think a lot of people at that time, including myself, sort of, it just hit a wall. Yeah. This is too much. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think also it was coming from, okay, we had, we had at that point been f five years, five and a half years of doing one event per month minimum, sometimes two events per month. Which is a lot. Or, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> and so it was coming from like that to like, oh, now a pandemic. And the way my brain works is, oh, this is like a time to pause. Like, no, I'm actually going to do just as much work, but just pivot this all online. And of course, fair enough, I needed to, I was, I was scared. I wanted to make up that revenue that we had lost. And so for me, I was like, what can we do? And but I think the biggest thing that I recommend for people is sometimes you do actually need to take a couple steps back in order to move forward. And that's what I realized in the fall. And so that was really the time that I was like, OK, I need to figure out what I wanted to do. So I just decided, Kate, I'm going to take some time. I'm going to be I'm going to journal. I'm going to dream. I'm going to think about what do I want like five years from now? What do I want 10 years from now? Um, and then in October, we found out we were pregnant <laughs> with so our funny. daughter. Um, so great. I'm saying so, so funny because we have like very parallel stories. stories. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, we found out we were pregnant. And then I was like, okay, this is another sign that I need to restructure the business in a way that is going to be that is going to make sense for me long term that also really serves our community in a really great way and so so would you say that that the pandemic in a way before you continue it yeah in the in a way was almost a gift that it gave yeah. you forced you to take yeah. a beat and think yeah. about what you actually wanted yeah yeah i think for sure and you know, when I look back, I think if that never happened, would I still be running at the pace that I had been running at before? Um, I'd like to hope not because maybe I would have hit a burnout, you know, before that and then been forced to take a break. But um, yeah, I don't know. And I, I think there were so many times during the pandemic, you know, even after I had had that moment of, OK, I need to really figure out what I want and, you know, build my business in a way that's more sustainable. And I started to kind of put some things in place to actually do that. So we ended up launching a podcast. We launched our online course, which we actually were hosting like workshops in person, kind of on similar things. And so we launched an online course. Um, we had masterminds before, but we started like really investing in that. And, and that was all online. But in the back of my head, I was always like, OK, but when can we go back to doing events? Like, when can we go back to like what we were doing before? Because it was this I had been doing it for so long and it felt so natural to me. And I knew I could do it and for it to be a success. And so it was just I had to I was I'm actually glad that it took so long in some ways because it forced me to be like, no, you don't have that backup plan anymore. You don't have that safety net of events. You have to make this work. And so I made it work because I had to. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. I guess it kind of forced you to almost build out these other aspects of your business. Yeah. yeah. The course, the podcast. Yeah. That are other revenue streams. Exactly. And now that things have opened up again, you are doing events yeah. again. And I yeah. know this because the 
event that I came to speak at in the in May May yeah. spring, yeah. Um, which was a fantastic event. And I mean, the amazing thing about your events is I'm always blown away at how like engaged and mm. loyal your community is. It was a how many people were at that event? I think there was around 200. Yeah, 200 yeah. or something. So 200 yeah. women, men and women. Yeah. Um, but mostly women show yeah. up and yeah. you have a room full, like 200 people who are there, yeah. who are hungry to connect their business owners themselves, whether they're seasoned or new or just mm -hmm. thinking of starting their own businesses. And yeah, they're hun hungry to connect, hungry to listen to the panelists. Yeah. Um, I really just inspired and, and open to learning and it it always amazes me like the type of people that you mm -hmm. bring out um because it's there it's just in a room full of amazing people yeah and i think it's really cool because that was a really special that event was so special for me because obviously it was the first one uh, that we had been able to do since 2020. And uh, I started talking to some people after the event, like, oh, you know, like, tell me about you or like, and they're like, and then I was like, how did you hear about this event? And then actually a lot of them said like, I actually found your podcast and I started listening and then I, and then I heard you were doing an event. So I came out and I'm like, how cool. And, and it was like a confirmation of, you know, all the things that I was kind of building behind the scenes to actually build up my um, online business is also supporting yeah. what I what I am now getting back into as well. And you're tapping into a new audience. Yeah, tapping yeah. into a new audience. And I think too, for me, now it's like I get to do these events. We're not doing one a month anymore. <laughs> We're yeah. doing just a few events per year. And but they're going to be better. They're going to be more curated. They're going to be better planned because I'm going to take the time to actually plan them well. And I also don't have that pressure of this is our income, so I better make this, you know, mm -hmm. I better make up, make these numbers happen, whatever that might be. Um, we do, like you said, we've built out these other revenue streams in our business that support us so that now we can, I think we can serve our community in such a better way because we're more stable as a business. And so that's been a huge learning for me these mm -hmm. past couple of years mm -hmm. so yeah. I love that you talk about serving your community so much because uh I think sometimes that can be forgotten mm -hmm. that you are really here to serve mm -hmm. well, um and it's easy as an entrepreneur to fall into a little bit of like the me 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 mindset and you know that comes because you're juggling a million different things you have obstacles that you need to overcome there's mm -hmm. tons of variables there's things that you didn't expect and so you feel like you're often get going into battle every mm -hmm. single day and you're like okay what what's today going to bring me yeah. and then it can it can become a little bit or you can get, I, well, I'm guilty of this, falling into that mindset where it's like, okay, what am I getting out of this, right? Like, what, what where are my retained earnings? Like, where's yeah. my profit? Where, what, What's my payout? Yeah. But that kit is, I think when you shift that mindset to, like you're saying, more of an abundant mindset mm -hmm. rather than scarcity, and it's really about serving your community, serving mm -hmm. your the people around you, there's a lot that can blossom and grow from that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, we, we live in a world that everyone wants success and income and all that stuff like overnight, right? Um, and building a business like if you and and I, I understand like of course you need to make money as a business I get that and that is really important and I think it is really important to know your numbers and to you know really dive into that and know that you're making profit and all of that but at the same time you really need to figure out okay well how is this business going to be sustainable long term because mm -hmm. at the beginning too like same thing. Like I got caught up in that too, when we were hosting these events and it's like, okay, well we got to, you know, we got to host another event because we need to bring in more income because we're now we're bringing on a team and we have all these other expenses. And so it just became this like thing that Frenzy. we were just like running, but like I couldn't even stop for a breath because it mm -hmm. felt like if I did, our whole business would fall apart. Like that's how I felt at that time. And I also felt stuck. I felt like well, what else are we going to do? Like, this is 
this is what I know how to do. And this mm-hmm. is how I've built the community. Mm-hmm. And this is why it's successful because it's so consistent and all of that, those things. And so there's a lot of things that I told myself that I could and couldn't do. And I didn't. Ooh, it, what do you think is like the limiting belief, your own limiting belief? Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. And I also like, I think going back to remember when I told you about how when I was starting the community and I didn't tell anyone in my network that I was doing it because I was like, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know if this is going to be a success. And I think that thought held me back for a very, very, very long time. Um, And I also a lot of the times would kind of hide behind my community and I wouldn't, you know, I never felt qualified to step out and be, you know, be the face of anything. And so that actually held me back for a very long time. And that was like the fear of like starting the podcast even. I'm like, no one wants to hear from me. Like people want to hear from other entrepreneurs. You know, I was used to like putting other people on stage and I would always be interviewing them, but I didn't feel like anyone would actually want to hear from me. And And that is such a common uh, thing that I think all entrepreneurs face at at different points in your business journey. Mm -hmm. And I think even as you're leveling up and even even as you're growing, every time you level level up, at least this has been my experience, I meet that inner critic and the who am I to be doing this. Yeah. Um, and I I remember in that my early days, I worked a lot with my coach, who am I to call myself an interior designer? Yeah. Because I dropped out of design school and yeah. I am one of those entrepreneurs that I did my degree, I did my Mm -hmm. bachelor's of arts and then ended up going to design school, but then dropped out because I had great work experience and I was hungry Mm -hmm. to like get out there, work, make my Mm -hmm. own money. And I knew I wanted to have my own business. And so it didn't feel right at that time to Mm -hmm. be in school. And so I didn't go back. Yeah ended up launching my own thing. And those early years, I really had to wrestle with the, who am I to call myself an interior designer? Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, well, who am I to think that I'm going to be famous? Yeah. Who am I to think that I'm going to do a TV show? Like every single time it was that voice would come back and then I would dial my coach. (laughs) Well, that's, that's the funny thing though. Cause from like the outside looking in, no one would have been able to know that about you like everyone would be like oh she's like she's on a tv show like oh my gosh she's so confident she's so natural like all these things and you know like that's that's how i see you like and i think that's how most of your community sees you so you know yeah thank you for also being vulnerable and it it takes more entrepreneurs to like actually be vulnerable and i'm so glad that to say that and that it's just that it's common it's common it is true yeah we all have those fears it doesn't matter what level of business you're at you're always going to feel like you don't belong there or yeah, you and it's, you're pushing because yeah. you're finding an edge, right? You're yeah. growing, you're pushing yeah. past your comfort zone. Yeah. And I think anytime you do that, you're going to question yourself yes. and you're, you're it's that next rung in, in your life or yeah. in your career tra- trajectory. And you're always going to have that feeling like I'm not qualified for this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's like, I feel like for all my events too. Like I would, I would get up on stage and it'd be like, before I start talking, I'm like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, there's all these people here. Like, how did I even get here? Like, what am I doing here? And so it's, I always actually share this because a lot of people, a big, a big thing that holds them back from attending one of our events is that they feel like they're going to be like they're not going to belong or they they feel like they're coming alone. So they're going to be awkward or they don't know how to network. I'm like, I'm nervous coming to my own event. Like mm. I am nervous to be in that room because it's, it's just a natural thing. You're always worried about like, well, what are people thinking of me? Or what if I look awkward or what if, mm. you know, and, and those are thoughts that I have. I'm like, I'm hosting this event. I better be the best networker in the room or else I'm an imposter, you know? And so we all have those insecurities and feelings. And I think if you realize that everyone else in the room is also feeling that way, I think you can just like step in with a little bit more confidence to be like, 
hey, this is my first time here. Yeah. Like, is this your first time here? Like, I'm feeling kind of nervous. And then yeah, sure enough, alone. that person's probably like, yeah, I'm nervous too. Like, let's sit together. And right? do you tell do you tell your story? Like, I love the the story of we, that you were just talking about just now about how like when you went to events, you felt like a fish out of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I that, do, I do share that. I mean, I should probably share it more because oh my god, it's I like, feel like you should have a video of that yeah. on your website or where some people <laughs> who are thinking about coming to your events because I feel yeah. like they, that's an instant connection. Yeah, to their yeah. Ex, if they're hesitant on coming. Um, but yeah, it can be intimidating when you know you're going to be in a room full of mm -hmm. business yeah. people and entrepreneurs yeah. and you're just starting out or yeah. or maybe your business isn't performing mm -hmm. yeah. the way that you want it to yeah. be or any number of things. It could be really intimidating to come to an event like that. Totally. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what did you or what have you done to push past your own limiting beliefs or your own the voice that says who am I to be doing this what do you do oh uh, man this is such a good question I think for me I call my coach everybody yeah <laughs> yeah it is it is about surrounding yourself with other people I think that's the biggest thing is I've recognized that it doesn't matter what stage of business that you're in you always have to have other people around you. Yeah. Whether it be a coach or whether it be a community um, of other people who are also having the same feelings. Because I think one, it's important to know that you're not the only one that has those feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and number two, you need you need people around you to remind you of your accomplishments. Because when we're feeling out, like if when we're feeling like we don't belong somewhere, when we feel like uh, oh, I'm such an imposter, whatever that is, we just immediately forget everything that we've accomplished up until this point. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and the, the, there's like a thing that comes with being an entrepreneur. I, I, it, where the bar is always, you are setting the bar so yes. high for yourself. Yeah. And then as you accomplish more things, that bar just moves with yeah, it. Absolutely. And so you forget that, yeah. hey, like, look at how far I've come. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's almost like you're never reaching where you need to be. And so you kind of have to stop for a second as an entrepreneur and go yeah. like, okay, wait a second. Yeah. Let's take stock of this. Yeah. And that's why, like, I'm so passionate. And I always tell this to my community, my mastermind members, anyone that is, you know, in my community is that like celebrate your little wins and I love that you guys do your like champagne Fridays I think that's so amazing because a, a lot of times we think we need to accomplish these massive things or these massive successes and then we can celebrate mm -hmm. and I think that is it's so too bad because all of the little tiny things that we're doing in our businesses like every email that you send out every like pitch that you potentially send out to a client or um, anything, right? Like those are the little things that when compounded over time is leading you to, to your success. Totally. It's not those like big, massive things, right? Those are just the results of all those small things that you're doing. And so I, I always encourage and actually in our mastermind, we have wins of the week. And sometimes people come, they're like, I don't I don't think I have a one of the week. And I always like I force them. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you do like you do have a win. But like maybe it's something so tiny, like mm -hmm. you sent an email that you were nervous to send. That is a win. Like mm -hmm. that is a win. Or you had a phone call with a client or you had a hard conversation mm -hmm. with one of your, you know, colleagues like that is a win. So I think or you left the studio early and went home two hours early and did some self-care. Totally, that's a win. Totally. Yeah. Or like something in your personal life, like that's a win, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's just really recognizing the small little things because those are what is going to actually take you to where you want to go. And then the other thing I want to say about like being an imposter is um, reminding yourself that you've done hard things in the past and you've done scary things in the past. I always have to remind myself of that too when I'm going through a challenge or when I'm scared to do something. It's like I've actually done really scary things before and I just put myself in that place of I can do this because I've done this before or I've done something similar. And that is 
like what helps me as well. So like writing down your wins, writing down the scary things that you've done, writing down your accomplishments, um, that really helps, I think, to to help you to move forward. Totally. To stuck. And it's it's like we were saying, it's so normal. I've shared this before, even at one of your events. But I think I heard that Meryl Streep. Uh, I said that right. Meryl Streep, think, the actor. Yeah, yeah. She struggles with imposter syndrome herself. And even yeah. though she has like eight Oscars or something Crazy. like that under her belt, even she thinks of herself yeah. ha- has imposter syndrome. Like, oh, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. You know, and so the most accomplished mm-hmm. people struggle with imposter syndrome. I mm-hmm. think it's totally, totally normal. Yeah. And your community can help you normalize these things because I yeah. think it's so easy to to get stuck in your head right yeah. like you yeah. if you don't have your community or people around you that you can really bounce ideas off of or talk to about this kind of stuff it's really easy to um, get stuck in your head be limited by your own beliefs that may not be true at all mm-hmm. and sometimes it takes someone outside to yeah. to help help you through it yeah and I think also recognizing like there are people around you that are so inspired by you. And I think like it's important to recognize that because like even when I talk to people that are in my community that I coach or in my mastermind and they're like struggling with something or they're like, oh, they, they feel like they're not good enough or whatever that is. It's like, man, I wish you could see yourself the way that I see you. Right. Or how other people in this group see you for just a second because we are so impressed with everything you've accomplished. And like Mm -hmm. these women are people that have accomplished so much, but they're like, who am I to do this, you know? And so it's like recognizing there are other people in your life, like, Maybe it's maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your grandma, maybe it's your sister, your your friend from high school who's looking at you and being like, wow, you know, she's going for it and they're inspired by you. And so uh, I think we lose sight of that when we're in a challenging time where maybe we're not getting the results that we want or Mm -hmm. whatever, just recognizing that there's people that are inspired by us. So Mm -hmm. like we better like we better take action so that, you know, we can um, prove to them that it's possible because you never know who you're, you're going to inspire to, to do something for themselves. So do you, aside from imposter syndrome, Mm -hmm. which I do feel like is a common, potentially like a common topic that comes up at these events or maybe in your mastermind, is there another common challenge or fear or obstacle that entrepreneurs talk about? Um, I think a big thing is, and I guess this is somewhat linked to that, but it's feeling like they have to be further along before they pitch themselves for opportunities or connect with someone to collaborate, like we were talking about before, the importance of collaboration. Um, And they have all these reservations around it. It's like, oh yeah, I'll do that once I'm at this point. But again, Like we were talking about, it's a bar that just continues to rise. And then what ends up happening is they never end up doing that thing that they want to do because they feel like they don't do it anyways. Exactly. They feel like they have to be further along. And so I just, you know, I feel like there's a little bit of comparison in that one too. Right. And these days with social media, it's so much worse because you look left, you look right, and you see all these other people that are in maybe the field that you're in accomplishing all of these things and mm-hmm. so-and-so wrote a book so now you need to write a book and so-and-so is yeah. doing a podcast so you need to do that and so-and-so has got a product line so you better start a product line <laughs> yeah. and I think that that can be really um if you look at what other people are doing too much you're never gonna feel like what yeah. you where you're at is enough it's good enough yeah and it's so important to know your own vision for what you want to do because you can be inspired by by what other people are doing. And I think there's so much value in that. Like, oh, wow, she's doing that. That's so cool. Or like, oh, that's so cool that she accomplished that. But that doesn't mean, like you said, like that doesn't mean that you have to go do it now. Like you don't have to do all of these things just because someone else did it. Does that actually align with where you're going Mm -hmm. and, and what your business, you want your business to look like and your life? Because we're also all in different seasons of our lives. Um, you know, some of us are moms and and we have other things that are going on in our lives. So maybe it's just not the right season for us to Mm. pursue that right now. And you can't get there. I love that you're touching on this. This is such a great point. You can't get there. At least I don't believe that you can get there without getting quiet and taking a minute, digging deep 
and really asking yourself those hard questions and yeah. kind of facing off with yourself. Yeah. And my personal experience around this is similar to yours where we in the, I mean, I definitely had my own oh shit moment when yeah. the, they announced the worldwide pandemic, but um, that turned around really quickly, at least for interior design work. So mm -hmm. I had a few months where it sort of slowed down. Yeah. It was the first time that I thought maybe I'm not going to have a business around mm -hmm. the corner here. And then things picked up like crazy. So yeah. Um, so everyone but, was investing in that so everyone at that was time. investing in their home yeah. constructions going crazy yeah. the real estate market was stuff is selling like hotcakes it was really strange yeah. um, counterintuitive uh, but in that time I I also found myself being really overworked burnout mm -hmm. coming having to face the fact that I was really actually unhappy, mm. which was a very difficult thing to, for me mm. to admit because I just finished the show. It had just launched. Mm. I had the biggest team I ever had. Yeah. We were doing the most projects that we were ever doing. It was kind of like, why am I unhappy? Like it was on paper. All, everything looked everything perfect. Was, everything yeah. looked perfect. Couldn't have been better. Yeah. And so it was so hard for me to admit that actually mm. something's not working and I'm not happy. Yeah. And there was a period of time where it I sort of uh, right around the time that I downsized and just before I, I took time yeah. to go inward and started to do my own work, which was a journey, but realized that some of the things that I was chasing and the way I was chasing it mm -hmm. wasn't actually in alignment with mm -hmm. who I was or what I wanted. Um, and so yeah, I think being able to what you were saying, ha do what you make sure that you're doing what you want to do because you want to do it, yes. not because you saw it on a beautiful Instagram feed. And that's what <laughs> yeah. looks like you need to be doing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so, so true. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because, yeah, we can we can chase success like just on paper, what we think success looks like without ever asking ourselves the question of okay, but is that what success looks like for me personally? Yeah. We can just chase this version of success that we see that we think we want. Totally. Um, and then we end up, yeah, not being happy with that. And I, I think that's so important. And what I just really love talking about, and, I, and I'm so glad that other on, entrepreneurs like yourself are talking about this stuff too, is, you know, there will be people out there that will tell you, oh, you're not doing that or you're not chasing that because you're because you're, um, you know, you're scared or you think, you know, you don't want that. It's like it could be that or it could be that it's actually just not aligned for you in the moment or this couldn't might not be the season for you right now to do that. And it's OK mm -hmm. to step back. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's important for uh, people in the entrepreneurial space to start talking about the fact that it's okay to actually step back and maybe to take a few steps back in your business, even if that means um, a cut in revenue, even if that means, you know, downsizing, even, even if that means whatever it means or shutting down a portion of your business that mm -hmm. doesn't serve you anymore so that then you can recalibrate and then go for what you actually want. Um, because I think, so much of what we're told is just that we need to more, need more, to more, want more, 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 bigger, bigger, and bigger. that doesn't make us yeah. happy at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. And so, um, so how yeah. has uh, becoming a mom? How has that yes. changed you and your business or your outlook on yeah. entrepreneurship? So much, like it's crazy. Um, just priorities change, right? When you become a mom and you realize like what's important and what's not. I think a big thing that my daughter teaches me is being present in a moment. Like I don't think I, I don't think before, her name's Rosie, before Rosie, I don't think I was ever as present as I can be now. And she's teaching me that and I'm still working on it. But it's like, they see things in the world, like they see a tree. She's like, tree. And I'm like, yes, you know what? <laughs> that is beautiful. And it's so special. And like, we just kind of go along in our day and we don't recognize the little special moments that we have. And I think the way that that relates to my business is like, one, having gratitude for everything that 
that I currently have and how it has actually allowed me um, to be more present with with my daughter than if I was running things the way I was before. Um, and the, the fact that I can choose my own schedule has, has been huge and so valuable. And also I recognize what's important and what's not. And it helps me actually make decisions faster. Yeah. So it helps me say no to things that are not a good oh, fit. Yeah. Yes I, to so things I echo that are. That. It's like you want a good dose of time management, oh have my a baby. Gosh, seriously. <laughs> and I think I get more, I think I'm more productive and get more done now, more important things done, I should say, than I did before. And yeah. I'm actually working less. Like I'm working maybe half the time. Um, but I'm able to get more important things done than, than before. before. Yeah. That was a huge mindset shift for yeah. me because I went to work back to work way faster than I thought I was going to. I yeah. thought I was going to take a few months off. It wasn't that at all. Like I went back to work almost right away. Yeah. Um, and I, and I worked right up until the day before I delivered. Mm -hmm. And I remember my husband being like, what you're going into the office today. He's like, you know that this is the last day you're going in, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, for me, I had to shift that mindset of yeah. like, okay, when I go home, no, I can't be on email from right. 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. I can't yeah. continue to do work because I have something else yeah. that is a priority. And so for me, having a baby has mm -hmm. been, oh my God, it's been such a joy. And I feel like for me, it's actually given me way better boundaries between mm -hmm my work life and my personal life, yeah, uh, which ha it, it's definitely been such a blessing. Yeah. And to your point about like, oh my God, tree, <laughs> it's just having yeah. a child, there's something so fun and playful mm -hmm. yeah, about watching your baby grow and discover yeah. the world. It's so fun. So it's just yeah. it's really just such a joy. And it makes you like, you can see things through their eyes yeah. and like appreciate things and be like, yeah, yeah, like that is really cool. And, totally. Um, yeah, it's so special. And um, I know before we hopped on, I was saying that I had news. Yes. Are you pregnant? I'm pregnant. Wow. <laughs> our second. Congratulations. So, yeah, thank you. That's um, exciting. Yeah. So that is news. Yeah. And it's like, um, again, like another kind of realization of, okay, I've done this once before, but this is going to change my yeah. business again. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be relearning uh, what this looks like, what my schedule looks like and having a newborn again and going through all of that. And so it's it's interesting because it's like one of those and talking to other people who have had um, more than one, too. It's like, yeah, you just you have to adapt and learn and grow. And it's I think that just relates so much to entrepreneurship. Like you're always learning, you're always growing, always. you're always changing. And um yeah, it's just a constant personal growth journey. Yeah. Um, I always so, say that. Yeah. I, always, I, I always say to grow professionally, you have to grow personally. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, on that note, I have <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I feel like the hour flew by and I feel like we could keep going for another hour. Yes, always. <laughs> I feel like whenever we talk, it's yeah. like, yeah, we could do it in another hour. I but. feel like there's been so much like juicy takeaways uh, for other people who are maybe have their own business or who are thinking of starting their own business. If you're in the Vancouver area and you want to attend one of your events, how do people find out about you? Yeah. Where are you? Give yeah. us give us all the deets. Well, everywhere, like no matter if you're in Vancouver or not, we all actually also have events happening other places like San Diego too. Um, but you can find all that information on our website. So it's just businessbabescollective.com. And you can find out about our podcast, our online courses, our programs, and our events as well. Awesome. Our, yeah. Anything else that we And what's Instagram? In Business Babes Co.? Business Babes Co. is our uh, global community. And then my personal Instagram, which is a little bit more about like business mixed with motherhood is uh, Danny Living Life. Danny Living Life. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. thank you everyone for tuning in to this episode. Definitely drop us a line. Make sure you tag myself and Danielle. I'd love to hear what stood out from you the most from this conversation. And Danielle, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I love this conversation. Thanks so much for listening and watching this episode. 
For more conversations like this, you can find them basically on all podcast platforms. Make sure you leave us a review because that really helps us get the show out there. And follow me on Instagram at Karen Bond. I always love hearing from you guys and learning what really resonated for you about these episodes. So when you leave me a note, make sure you tag myself and the guest. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Love you guys and we'll see you in the next episode.